Now, one night, May 7th, 1994, after bowling the three girls, I saw them off. I branched the place to get some drugs, got back to the hotel room, and I decided to cook the cocaine. Normally, cocaine is a white powder. You don't smoke the white powder to get it to smoking level. On your way home, you branch a pharmacy and get bicarbonate of soda powder and a cooking bottle just like a chemistry laboratory. You measure a portion of the cooking powder, mix with the bicarbonate of soda powder into the cooking bottle. When you pour water, it will be a effervescent like Andrew's liver salt. And then you heat it with a lighter. When it boils, oil will form on top of it. You get ice cold water, pour it into the content, and the oil will form what we call rock or chunk. And then you can now use a glass pipe or what we call a water bunker. Or if you want brandy flavor, you pour the water out and pour brandy inside. So I was whistling, I was cooking this coke, I finished, I prepared the bunker with ice cold water. When I put the chunk, that's what they call the rug, on top to heat it. As I was taking it towards my mouth, I heard a voice that said, if you don't stop this lifestyle, you are dying this year. I never knew what that voice was. But I decided to heat the coke. And I've been smoking for 14 years. When I took in the heat, as I was trying to puff out the smoke, that's how I started vomiting blood. I was scared. But I said to myself, I'm sure they poisoned this powder because I think somebody's after my life. Because I was a man that could not stay in a place for five minutes. I've killed, I've slaughtered, I've shot, I've used machete to kill severally. Killed in cold blood. Could not stay in a place for five minutes. I get into somewhere, order for a bottle of beer. Even before they get it, I'm out again. Or if they get it, I pour it in the glass. As I try to take a sip, after the first sip, I put money in. They're calling me for my change. I'm gone. I was always on the run. Then I took the cocaine powder. I said, let me go and flush it. So I flushed it. And I decided to step down with the heroin powder. Heroin powder is brown. It's called brown sugar. Put it on foil paper and run it. And as I inhaled the smoke, I started throwing up blood again. So I heard the voice again. And a fraction of seconds, there was a TV in my front, like a TV, and my life was played before me. And it dawned on me. Hey dude, there's no future for you. I asked myself certain questions. Is this how you are going to live? Get married and train children? Of course the question, the answer came, no. So I stripped myself. Looked up. And I said, you this Jesus that they say can save, if it is true, only one thing I want you to do for me, deliver me from drug addiction. Listen to me. I was in my hotel room in Brussels. You know, then I don't smoke foreign grass. So if we had to travel, I travel with Nigerian grass. And I carry it with a, a style of drug trafficking they call Kele. You know, there is swallow, there is packaging. Kele is when you insert it into your anus. So I got to my hotel room, it was winter, and I pushed this marijuana out. I opened it up. I forgot to put Rizla paper, and it was cold outside, it was winter. So I looked around the room. You know, four or five stars hotel, there must always place this Gideon's International Bible there. So I picked up this big Bible, checked the leaves, and I said, this is light enough. So I tore one of the leaves. 
wrapped the smoke, started smoking, and from then on till May 7, 1994, that I gave my life to Christ, the last spliff I smoke in the night, I do with the Bible. God is humorous. He was preparing me to preach the gospel. I never knew. I smoked with the Bible. Today I preach. You know, one thing I know is that authentic transformation can only take place when God is involved. Take it or leave it. If anyone be in Christ, is a new creation. If anyone be in Christ, he is transformed into a new species. Second Corinthians 5 17. Second Corinthians 3 18. As you behold his face, as in a mirror, we are being changed into his image. Going from glory to glory. We are being transformed. Some other translations put it like that. First Peter 1 23. He said, We are born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed of the word of God that abides forever. I used to look at myself and ask myself, it wasn't possible for me to be a Christian or to be changed. Because as I speak with you, the same people we played with Fela Kuti together, they are still following Fela's son that was giving birth to in our presence around playing with him. Homeless, no wife, no children, no vision, affecting no part of the society. And I look at myself and I know that it's because God was involved. So let's wake up to reality. Let's not play game. I wanted to come here to start to, you know, plug up something and start to keep you writing. But I got this. Tell them what happened to you. It's authentic. Now, at this point, I lifted up my eyes in that brutal room. And I said, you this Jesus they are talking about. If it is true, you can save. Deliver me from drugs. Why did I say so? I've been treated severally. The first time I was treated for drugs was in Frisco, California. I went back to drugs. I remember coming out of my hospital in Frisco that day, all washed up. The band had gone ahead of me to Texas. And I asked myself, looking very fine and healthy, I said, is it really true that drugs have left your system? Instead of me to, I had my ticket and my passport. Instead of me to go and board a local flight from California and hit Texas, I said, let me go and find out. That was the day I started shooting cocaine. That's injecting. Several I was treated in New York, New Jersey, Chicago, Miami, Portland, Oregon. I kept going back. Was treated in Scotland, in Offbank, in Germany. I kept going back to drugs. In Nigeria, severally. But this night, I only called on the name of he that I never knew. I've always known Mohammed. And something happened. Now, before that day, between the hours of 7 p.m. and 12 midnight, if I have not done 25,000 an hour of cocaine and heroin, I can't sleep. But that night, the first hit of coke I tried to take, I was vomiting blood, so I have not taken it any drug. After that prayer, it was around 12, a, 12 a.m., midnight. I didn't know what happened. But when I opened my eyes, it was 8.30 a.m. the next day, and I was on the rug, floor. That was the first miracle. That for me, that was that was the turning point. Got up from the floor, it was like magic. I didn't even remember. And that's why till tomorrow I'm not a religious Christian. Remember, in that prayer, I did not say in Jesus' name, there was no pattern. I was even talking to him as if he was my mate. You this Jesus, if it is true, you can save deliver me from drug addiction. It's just like this morning when I saw the clouds and the rain was dropping. I said, Jesus, how can people put all these things together and you want rain to fall? 
And before I walked from the room to the bathroom, I saw the sun arising. I'm not a religious Christian. And I will never be a religious Christian. I have Christ's life. So that was it. My salvation. For the first time, I forgot to tell you about a guy that came one Sunday early morning because in the shrine, Fela Shrine, if you come to the club, it's a club as big as but there's a shrine where we worship. Shongo Yemoja, Shokmano Ogun. You know? That's why I want to appeal to everyone that calls himself a Christian that is still listening to the music. You need to know that music is powerful. You need to know that music carries a lot of things. You can go and read the book by Nicky Cruz, The Devil is on the Run, and Run Baby Run, to find out the demons behind certain kind of music. But I can tell you the devil behind Afrobeat. And if you are a hip hop guy here, you know the message in hip hop that hip hop music has to do with drug, violence, and sex. So you don't mess with that because your ear is one of the gateways to your mind. <laughs> 